You mentioned in the book, I let the voice show freely and resonate with every part of the body. So how does your voice resonate with every part of the body? What kind of feeling is that? And how to train yourself? That's a lot of questions in one question. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I sing Pansori for somebody, what I do is uh, the person is sitting in front of me, and first I listen to the um, field that develops, because there's a field developing between us, and with the first singing that I do, all the information that we need will reveal itself. And from that, the sound finds the correct place in the body where to go to. So I do not choose the place of the body, but the, the sound itself finds where there is tension, where there is blockage, and how to first, usually, how to work around that in a kind of, you can say, diagnostic way. And then, when there has been enough information, then the sound will start entering that place and start melting what needs to melt. and, and and liberating the energy. And you ask me, how do you learn that? Um, that happened very slowly, because in the beginning, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I would think, well, maybe I have to concentrate on a certain part. Somebody would tell me, uh, my liver is hurting, or I have a stomach problem. But when I really listened to the sound, sometimes I was noticing the sound doesn't go to the liver, doesn't go to the stomach. It goes to the kidneys first. So I learned to follow the sound. And um, I have done a lot of um, rolling on the floor and moving and studying my own body. While I sing, while I sing for the bones, where do I hear the sound? What kind of sound corresponds to the bones? What kind of sound is needed for a liver that is blocked? What kind of sound is connected to the heart or to the lungs? So now, when I sing for somebody, I almost already feel in my own body where the sound will resonate, where the sound will, will have its effect. And often, after the singing, I will share with the person I've been singing for and, and ask them, I felt I was singing for the heart. Do you also feel that? And usually they say, Yes, I have this feeling you're on top of the heart or behind it or to the side of it. So there's also a lot of exploring together with the one I'm singing for. Jack, you have been working with Yvonne. That's right. So could you talk a about a little when you work with Yvonne? Yeah, it's a, it's just as uh, Yvonne mentioned that it's an amazing experience. Sometimes it's very hard to express, you know, the feeling about the vibration, you know, yeah. Yeah, especially touching the, your body, even touching your feeling, you can say touching your heart or something, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a frequency, it's a very, vibration is a very, uh, very neat, very, you know, very subtle, yes, you know, just can penetrate, you know, yeah. you even can can, can, can through your body, you know, yeah. to the other dimensions, you never, you never using your brain to imagine this, what, what kind of the things happen to me. Just as you share, you know, uh, you, 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 you feel that, you know, your sound is touching the heart, 
or the or some organ of the patient, yeah? But uh, it's very hard to explain. For me, the interesting thing is um, because I want to teach this to people. Yes, that's right. So I realized they need some stepping stones or some help. A guide. Some guide. <laughs> so over the years, I realized there are different levels on which the sound can resonate. The first is the physical level, yes. the, the, what, what we can touch. The second level is more subtle, mm -hmm. and it's more what do we feel? Yes. What are our emotions that start moving? And the next level is what is happening in the mental mm -hmm space and that means what is happening in the brain what kind of changes are happening there which is you could say again a higher frequency and then the fourth uh, level is what is happening on the social level but that has a connection with what is happening on the much more uh, transcendent level, some people say spiritual, but you can say what is what is happening in this bigger field. And gradually you learn to distinguish that and to yeah, to trust. It has a lot to do with can I can I really trust the sound? That is one of the most difficult things for my students to learn. Different sound traditions say that, for instance, organs have a specific sound, liver has a specific sound, stomach, kidneys. I found that the body and all the different organs and the different levels in it is like a symphony. Yeah. In which one organ can be out of touch with the rest which means we have to bring back the symphony. And that it is no longer, maybe it was true in the past, it's no longer true now that this sound has to go for the liver or this sound has to go for the stomach. So what we need to l learn is to listen to the symphony and and in a way fill in what is needed and that can be very different sounds and when uh, you ask me are there different frequencies for the knee or for the brain yes uh, yes and no <laughs> Usually when you work on the level of the body, the sounds are also more embodied, more grounded, sometimes lower. But when you sing for the brain, the sounds by itself usually have more high frequencies, what we call brilliance. There are, in the sound of a human voice, there are four different layers, you can say. The first layer is the pitch, how high or how low the sound is. The second layer is the vowel, if I say The quality of the sound is very different. The, the E is much more penetrating than the A. And then there is also the vibrato, that is a, 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 vibration. a vibration that has a certain rhythm. And on top of those is what we call brilliance. And they, they are sounds that have a more transcendent quality. So they come into the voice. It's not something you can produce. But with this, 
is more and more free, those sounds reveal itself. 